All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. It's El Profesor here, and uh, it's a blustery afternoon out here in Winchester. But interestingly, not as uh, windy as I thought it, it uh, I thought it'd be. I think the rest of uh, uh, par parts of other other parts of Riverside County, Ventura County, especially, and uh, northern parts of LA County, like Santa Clarita, Valencia, and I think out in toward uh, the Antelope Valley, they're really getting the heavy winds. But kind of kind of quiet here. N nothing really uh, uh, earth shattering or dramatic. So that's definitely good for uh, for those of uh, those of us out, out here who who might have been concerned about any uh, possible. Uh, of fire danger. <clears throat> Well, all right. Uh, as, as promised, I want to go ahead and say a few things about one of the video options we have for the uh, video review sim, which is which is due very soon, coming up on Friday, October the 11th. And as I told you and I told you earlier, I want to go ahead and say a few things about the uh, uh, about the Cortez video, the one Conquistadors with, with Michael Wood focusing on Hernan Cortez. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to uh, give you a, a review a, a review about any of the other videos, especially the ones about the American Revolution, because we're definitely running short on time. But for sure, in the second half of the semester. I'll give you. I'll try to give you at least the four, maybe five reviews on some of the films for part two of the assignment, which is due coming up in December. But without further ado, let me go and say a few things about the uh, Hernan Cortez video. And to do that, I actually have my other iPad here, which has uh, some of the notes. So, uh, so forgive me if if I keep uh, looking away to to my left, but I'm not looking at the tigers or the red wings or anything like that, or the, or the lions. Interestingly, uh, as you can probably imagine, I'm definitely happy with uh, the, the way the tigers played last night and the way the red wings have have, have started. So, hopefully, the uh, Moton boys can keep it going tonight in, in game two. Uh, Justin Verlander is on on the mound. He's been kind of inconsistent this season, so he hopefully he can get things turned around and really. Uh, Get back to a Cy Young form for the playoffs, but uh, enough about the uh, about the Tigers and the Red Wings and all, all of that stuff. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'll definitely tell you a lot more things about all that coming up in the upcoming announcements. But let's get on with the with the Cortez film, and uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you uh, some of the highlights about some of the main elements. And uh, I'm gonna have to have to take take off my glasses because because uh, uh, I've got the screen here and uh, I'm actually nearsighted, so. Uh, <clears throat> So I, I can see without my glasses up close, but for, for driving, then I definitely need these. So let me just take these off for the uh, next few minutes while I look at the information on the screen here. All right. Um, the uh, the film itself uh, is is part of a series that the British uh, popular story Michael Wood did back around 2001. And in it, he focused on four conquistadores, Hernán Cortés, Álvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca. And I wanted to bring in the video for, uh, for this semester, but... Uh, but I, I decided not not to. Maybe I might do it next time I teach 108 uh, and the other explorers, uh, Francisco Pizarro and also uh, and also uh, or Orellana, whose first name escapes me. But he's one of the I guess you might say one of the more minor conquistadores. He explored the the Amazon and the Orinoco basin essentially looking for the famous uh, El Dorado place. Uh, but for our purposes, it's Hernán Cortés, and I'll go, want to go ahead and get right into the film in terms of what this is all about. The way Wood uh, structures the film is that he likes to get into the heart of the action, and this is something he's done for a lot of his films for the better part of about 20 years. He's done films on Alexander the Great, uh, he's done films on... Uh, uh, on Mesopotamia, on Persia, on India, and in those films, he places himself in the middle of the in the middle of the of the scene uh, to, in essence, follow the path and be in the scene of, of the action, uh, depending on depending on on the era and the time that he's covering. And what he does in this film is he follows the the path of Hernán Cortés when he lands in Veracruz in 1519 and makes his way up into what is now present day Mexico City. And a little bit of background about Cortés, and this is stuff that Wood gets into the start of the film. Hernán Cortés uh, was born in the tiny town of Medellín in uh, in western Spain, in the region, in the famous region of Castile or Castilla in Spanish, uh, but more so the geographically known as Estremadura, which is actually more of a harsher region, harsher part of, of Castile. And you might say this sort of a rough and tumble crowd. Crowd comes from a lot of the conquistadores came from that part of of Spain, so they're more of a rougher type of character. And a lot of these guys were more called the uh, lesser no nobility, the uh, Hidalgos. Basically, they were like the uh, third, fourth sons, fifth sons, who didn't have the chance for the inherit inheritance. So, so whereas the uh, oldest brothers and maybe the second brother had the chance to get the, the inheritance, the younger ones were the ones who uh, uh, saw their best opportunity for fame and fortune, glory, God, gold, Amazon women. <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, all of that stuff in going to the New World. So after Columbus uh, sailed across the ocean blue in 1492, you probably know that refrain from uh, uh, elementary school, you might say the floodgates opened to anybody and everybody, and then Hernán Cortés was part of that massive uh, crowd of, of, of people flooding uh, across the Atlantic. 
Atlantic into what is now the New World, landing mostly in, in places like, like Mexico, which at that time was called New Spain. Um, but when he lands in uh, when he lands in uh, in Veracruz in fifteen nineteen, Cortes was already developing a reputation for being sort of a hothead, sort of an impetuous uh, uh, impetuous uh, guy, impetuous character. He was defying the orders of the governor of Cuba, Governor Velasquez, and Governor Velasquez tried to rein, rein him in, uh, but Cortes. Once he landed in Veracruz, began to defy the uh, defy the, the governor, and uh, there was a very famous phrase which uh, a lot of my hist my professors from San Diego State in uh, the Latin American classes uh, talked about, called "obedezco pero no cumplo," which simply means uh, "I obey but I do not com com comply," which simply means I recognize the authority of the king, of the governor, of the viceroy, of the uh, captain general, uh, what whoever the uh, the main uh, uh, bureaucratic guy above you was. But I'm not going to go go through the orders. And this is a famous formula that a lot of the a lot of these Spaniards did when they came into the New World. So whether it was Mexico, whether it was the Caribbean, whether it was Argentina, Chile, and whether it was some of the ones coming into present-day California, New Mexico, Texas, and Florida, they used that phrase uh, time and time again. And keep in mind, everybody. You figure that the main seat of, of authority is all the, across the Atlantic in, in, in Spain, in the capital, at, uh, uh, in, the, uh, uh, the, in the court of the king. And this time, the king was, the king was actually, actually Charles V. Uh, not surprised, but who's going to enforce that order when, when you've got these guys across the Atlantic doing pretty much their own thing? Uh, how do you rein these guys in? That was the situation that, that Governor Velasquez faced, even though Cortes was only uh, about a, uh, uh, only a few only a few hundred miles away away from from Cuba in what is in what is now Mexico. So uh, Cortes uh, he greets. He greets some of the emissaries from the famous Emperor Emperor Moctezuma, Moctezuma II, who sends uh, these uh, ambassadors uh, to Cortes. Uh, that is uh, essentially the, with the idea that he is the he is the the returning god. I'll talk about that in just a second here. And they and they give give him gifts because that's what you do when you when you greet a, a god. Uh, you recognize that he's a god, and you want to give him gifts, whether it's precious, uh, whether it was things such as cacao beans. Quetzal, bird, bird feathers, other precious minerals, uh, jade, serpentine, uh, things of that nature, uh, and also gold. Well, that's what you do. Well, let, let's put it this way: When Cortes uh, uh, saw the gold, you might say his eyes, uh, his eyes went like uh, like uh, high high beams. Uh, uh, hiding on a truck on a, on a lonely highway, uh, Cortes inquired if there was more gold, and the and the and the ambassador said yes, yes there was, and reportedly Cortes made a very famous comment, which was telling about his mentality at the t at the time. Cortes reportedly said, "We Spaniards uh, suffer from a disease that only gold can can cure," and with that you might say that's the chain of events. And Cortes, there was no turning back. It was on up to what's now what was known as the what what is known today as the Veracruz Highway on into the. Uh, uh, on into the heart of the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan, which of course is where present-day Mexico is located. So, uh, as the film is progressing, Wood is talking about all of this, and he's visiting people in Veracruz. And, and at one point, he's actually watching a uh, watching an old film uh, in, uh, uh, in in Veracruz, in which it's it's the film Captain from Castile, starring the legendary actors Cesar Romero, uh, famous m more so in later years for his role as the, as the uh, Joker in, uh, in Batman, the 1960s Batman, and also the famous actor Tyrone Power was very very popular back 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 in uh, back in those days. <clears throat> okay, so once the uh, once the die is cast and once the uh, the once the the way is paved, Cortes and, and his men march up north uh, into the mountains. But some of the men. Um, Begin to wonder if Cortes has lost his his mind that he's he's gone he's gone crazy and some of them actually plot a mutiny. Cortes gets wind of it. He arrests the the, the plotters, has the main ones executed, and he burns the ships. Uh, Wood mentions this, and clearly, uh, this it, clearly it was a case of it's now now or never. It's a point of no no return. Cortes on the one hand being tough and and mean and nasty and and doing this and burning the ships. There's no way to go back to Cuba. But on the other hand, Cortes is able to uh, uh, to say to his men, "Señores, we're on a, we're on a mission from God. Uh, this is a great mission. Uh, it's part of the Reconquista spirit. Blah blah blah. Uh, my uh, my dream is, is your dream. We can do this, Señores. Come on, have faith in me. I have faith in you. Let's do this thing." Basically, that was just what Cortes is saying. And if you recall from the PowerPoint program I had a few weeks ago on the on Spain on the Reconquista, that's a very important key point. Very important point to keep in mind. 
in that Spanish Christians had the sense of uh, seven centuries of mission, of fighting against the infidels, 700 years of fighting against the Moors, and to a lesser extent, the, 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 the Jews. Uh, so when you have this militant brand of Christianity in which, uh, in which you fight against the infidels, uh, on, on and on, and, and so on, and, and, and so forth, not surprising, it's going to rub off on, on everybody. Cortes had this mentality, and he was using this spirit to, in essence, get his men to, to his side. And for the most part, that tactic worked. So on they went into the mountains, and they came across some, some people, some were friends of the Aztecs, and some were enemies of the Aztecs. Uh, along, the way, along the way, as Wood points out, he comes across the town of Hico, and uh, uh, reportedly, Cortes tries to tell, to tell the town people, the townspeople that, uh, well, you know, uh, this is a region that was given to us by uh, uh, by His Majesty King King Charles and the High Priest named the named the named the Pope. Uh, uh, you you are now welcome into this realm of Christianity. It is good fortune for all of you. Blah blah blah. You get the idea. Of course, that's basically telling the people that they are blessed to become part of this uh, realm of of uh, Christianity. Uh, but as Wood points out, some of the people seem to think that this uh, Pope character might have been drunk at the time. Who is he to to say that uh, that we're now part of this Christianity? Christianity thing when we don't even know who these guys came. They might have come from the moon or from uh, Venus or Jupiter or, 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 or so on and so forth. But over time, Cortes is able to gain allies from a lot of the uh, lot of the people who actually were no friends of the Aztecs. The Aztecs were heavy tributary state, trying to get as much in terms of uh, luxury goods, uh, heavy heavy taxes, tribute, uh, even sacrificial victims for human sacrifice. And for a lot of the uh, lot of the people in the region, uh, they they saw Cortes and the Spaniards as a lesser of two evils. So gradually, one by one, Cortes is making allies as he's making his way north. I'm sorry, west into uh, Mexico City. Uh, the place where things really start to take take a turn for uh, for the Aztecs is when they come. I'm sorry, for the Spanish, when they come to the town of Tlaxcala. Tlaxcala was a powerful city state independent of of Tenochtitlan, which. Uh, which on the one hand was sometimes a rival, but mostly, I'm sorry, sometimes an ally, but mostly a rival to Tenochtitlan and the Aztecs. And the Tlaxcalans, the Tlaxcalans were no fan, were, were no fans of the Aztecs and no fans of Cortes and the Spaniards early on. So uh, a struggle in, ensued. Some of Cortes's men, men got injured in a protracted battle, but, uh, but one by one, because of Spanish superior firepower, uh, 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 losses were mounting for the Lashkalans, and, and, and they called for a truce and a surrender, and their emperor, uh, Emperor Hiko Tenkatan, he called, he called for a truce, and he met with, with Cortes, and an agreement with, with, was arranged in which the, uh, at, the Spaniards and the Tlaxcalans came to an understanding that they would fight against their common enemy, that being the Aztecs and Denot, uh, the Aztecs and their emperor Moctezuma II. So with that, this is the most important, one of the most important points of the story. By having all these Tlaxcalan Indians on his side, he, uh, Cortes, uh, bolstered his uh, his forces. Uh, uh, numbers re estimate something like seventy five thousand Indians joined his side. So when you've got all these Indians on your side, clearly the balance of power is now on your on your in your favor, and you can make the way further on into the heart of the Aztec capital. And sure enough, that that's what what they did. Uh, at this point in time, we're talking about roughly uh, late summer, early fall of 1519, and along the way, they come across the town of Cholula, which was an Aztec Bay center. There, here's where you might say Cortes' uh, brutality comes to the, to the forefront. Uh, without getting into a lot of specifics about it, you can read more, see more about it in, 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 uh, in, in the film. Uh, <clears throat> um, of course, this issued some uh, 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 some uh, re reprisals, some uh, uh, some announcements, some 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 statements. You people have sinned against us. You people this. You people that. How dare you? Uh, <clears throat> blah, 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 so on and so forth. So where that an ambush was planned in which both the Spaniards and the, uh, uh, and the Tlaxcalans uh, ambushed the Cholulans, a massacre in, 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 in ensued. And, and at this point in time, you clearly indicate that once news of this gets back to Moctezuma and Tenochtitlan, then the heat really starts to uh, starts to get on to the Aztec emperor. And the Aztec emperor himself, Moctezuma, a little bit of a backstory about this, is that the Aztecs weren't fearful of the famous legend of Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl was the uh, god known as the feathered serpent, the god of wind, the god of learning, the god of uh, of uh, of l l life. A lot of benevolent uh, characteristics pertaining to the Aztecs. And it was said the legend was that many many year, years years ago, in uh, when the Toltecs were, were around, the Toltecs were the immediate predecessors to the Aztecs, north of uh, present day Mexico City in the town in the regional as, as Tula. It was said that uh, that Quetzalcoatl, who was the emperor of, of of Tula, he had a, a 
a, a massive feud with his rivals, and his rivals who hated uh, Quetzalcoatl, they gathered around an arrival god by the name of Tezcatlipoca. Tezcatlipoca was a god of smoke, mirrors, war, deception, and Tezcatlipoca had to plan about Quetzalcoatl. They would uh, bring Quetzalcoatl to some banquet, uh, make, make, make him drunk, make him act silly and stupid, and because Quetzalcoatl didn't know what he was doing, it was said that he committed incest with his sister. Well, in Mesoamerican times, back in those days, and, and to this day as well, you do something like, like that, you're, you're, you're disgraced, you're, you're, uh, you're a bum, you're a goon thug, you're this, you're, you're, you're that. So, to make a long story short, Quetzalcoatl is banished, and it was said that he, uh, he had a raft made of serpents and sailed, uh, and sailed to, the, to, to the east. But it was said that, um, that he would come one day return uh, on, on a certain time, in a certain year, to reclaim his throne. And the year was, in the Aztec language Nahuatl, Se'akatl, which means one reed. And reed, of course, reed, uh, meaning the, uh, uh, the plant life, those, those, those tall plants that you see in marshes, lakes, l l l l l l l l uh, lagoons. So when you go duck hunting and you're hiding in, in, and you're and you're hiding to catch the ducks, that's the stuff you're most likely you're going to, you're going to be hiding in. Well, guess what? The year one read took place in 1519, and of course Moctezuma was paralyzed with with, with, with fear. And when the two finally met in November 1519, you might have just a matter of time before things finally uh, fell by the wayside. And sure enough, uh, Moctezuma would be uh, captured by, uh, by by Cortes, held prisoner for the better part of about. Uh, about six or seven months into early 1520. Um, I see I'm really uh, I'm going up against the clock here in terms of time, so let me quickly wrap up the story here, and if you want to get, know the rest, watch the film. But to make a lo long story short, by April 1520, the people of, of Tenochtitlan turn against, turn against Moctezuma. They know something crazy is happening here. And here's where the story gets re really confusing. Nobody knows for sure if Moctezuma was actually murdered by Cortes or if the people turned against him. The Spanish accounts say, well, no, it was the people. They hated Moctezuma. They thought he was a goon, a son of a bitch, a, th a thug, what, 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 whatever. So they killed him. But Aztec accounts say, no, 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 Cortes, uh, Cortes actually murdered Moctezuma, and then from that point in time, all hell broke loose. Uh, things really got, got intense, got intense for, for the Spaniards. They had a fleet to Tenochtitlan. Many of them were, were, were lost, and, uh, uh, and as they sought refuge with the Tlaxcalan allies, Cortes is looking around his men. They, they're disillusioned. They're sad. They're brokenhearted. Uh, they want to go back to, to, to Cuba, want to go back to Spain. Uh, but when Cortes realizes that the shipbuilder, Martin Lopez, is still alive, that's when you might say the fortunes turn and the story begins to, uh, begins to take on a new momentum. So I'll go ahead and stop it here as for how the story unfolds. Again, if you want to find out more about the story, definitely watch the film and use that for the part one of the video review assignment. And incidentally, Martin Lopez, who, who you remember was my uh, sample for uh, Reflection Journal 1, is a real character, and of course you'll find out more about Lopez as you uh, watch the uh, watch the film. All right, so that's uh, that's the story of Hernan Cortes and the uh, and the Cortesados film with with Michael Woods. So again, this is just one of many options you can you can choose for the assignment, which is due coming up on Friday the eleventh. Go ahead and check that out, or any of the others I have listed. Uh, again. In the in the in the in the discussion board in the general form, now what I have on the assignment worksheet. So if any of you need to uh, uh, review, recap what I have in terms of directions, just review the video that I posted for you last week in terms of how to actually access films on on demand. Okay, so that's it, everybody. The next time, film I have for you, I will do a review of one of the other one of the films for the second half of the semester, leading up to uh, the second due date, which it comes up in December. All right, so that's it from from Winchester. You guys enjoy the rest of the uh, of the weekend, and. Uh, I'll rejoin you on Monday for a new announcement. All right, take care, you guys. Talk to you later.